Well, here comes the third and possibly final review that I'm going to deal with with all three of the Fred Finkelhorn films. Yes, because I had suffered all three of them already. That's, that's just so painful to watch that even I'm actually sitting there thinking about it already. Well, this time, however, Fred Finkelhorn is now at summer camp. And it's... <laughs> This ain't going to be pretty once we see this because I happen to be a big fan of all these summer camp movies and TV shows that, that has a lot of fun and activities that you really enjoy because, you know, Heavyweights is one of my favorite movies of all time when it comes to summer camp movies and so many others that follow. This one is very unpleasant to sit through and I had to sit through all three of them already. But here goes nothing. It's called Fred Free, Camp Fred. Stars once again Lucas Crenshank as Fred Finkelhorn with Daniela Monet, Tom Arnold. He, yeah, he must have been wasting his time seeing that he's been in s some good films and, and plenty of bad ones. Yeah. With Adam Hirschman, Joy Bragg, Matthew Scott Miller. Leah Lewis, Adrian Kelly Turner, Steve Heidner from Seinfeld, who played Banya, and Madison Wiley. Slophand Fallen Hogan with John Cena, Carlos Knight, and Jake Wary. And it's directed by Jonathan Judge. Well, here it goes. The movie begins following the last day of school. Fred Ficklehorn, once again played by Lucas Crankshank. Yeah, he even came up with his own Last Day of School song. That's borrowed right straight out of High School Musical. Oh, God, do I hate these type of films. Especially the series itself. Uh, well, see, I'm already angry already. Anyway, yeah, he reveals to attend at a local summer camp known as Camp Superior, which he explains that he has all the rides... Yeah, the fun rides and all these activities and, and all the food that he wants and, and have his lifelong dream over there. That is until his mother decided to send him to a horrible summer camp, a, a very different one, known as, and you're going to love this, Camp I Want a Pee Pee. Yeah, they should come up with these uh, bathroom humor jokes this way. <laughs> and, yeah, it's just five-year-old humor right there. <laughs> I don't even know if a five-year-old would enjoy this. Yeah, he was being forced into going to the camp uh, I want a pee, pee bus. He didn't want to go in, but when he finally did, <laughs> yeah, he's been screaming at the top of his lungs in front of a thousand kids who were in there. Yeah, until they finally arrived and and they got out of the bus already covering their ears because of his irritating voice. Yeah, I bet their ears are already bleeding already. Well, they meet the head counselor named Floyd Smith Meyer, who's played by Tom Arnold, already earning a paycheck for this ridiculous role. Yeah, he also came up with his Indian, <laughs> his Indian model. I want to pee pee on you. I want to pee pee on you. I want to pee pee on all of you. Unbelievable. But with other campers named Magoo, Chatter, Spoon, and Dig. Yeah, four kids. Along with another counselor named Murray. Yeah, who's basically just playing, you know, one character after another. Yeah, he's just dressed up, doing all this other stuff. Yeah, he, he's like, he's the, the chef. He's the, <laughs> yeah, he's the, he's all this, uh, characters that he comes up with. And of course they were introduced to a beautiful but very sexy French nurse named Osagna. Yeah, which a lot of kids were fantasizing her because she takes them to their nurse house every time you know they ever get sick over there. During that night, Fred had discovered all these bad, disturbing dreams about this, including the one where he actually did use his normal voice, and yeah, they, they threw this joke in until he was woken up and, and found out that he was still at camp. He also found out that 
camp on the run of Pepe was also competing against the camp that he originally wanted to go to in the first place, Camp Superior. And they've been competing in the summer camp games for 69 years. And Superior has always won. Also found out that that something was inside the food at, that they were serving against I Wanna Pee Pee campers. That it might have been drugged. And the fact that a giant rat was going to eat their brains when they go into a place called the Rat's Den. Unbelievable. Oh yeah. <laughs> kind of dumb. Well, but avoiding the grill that he had to eat, um, Fred decided to eat some hallucinogenic red berries instead. Yeah, and suddenly he got really sick. He wants up at the nurse's office, and you know the nurse actually just gave him some some toothpaste instead of cream, and to wipe all of his face off. Yeah, she may be sexy and beautiful, but she's sort of a dummy. <laughs> yeah, come, I mean, come on. That's, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, he's also been given some advice by, once again, John Cena, who seems to pop up every once in a while in all these refrigerators. Yeah, uh, It's like he was only a fig of his imagination. Once uh, they went inside the rat's den with Magoo, Chatter, Spoon, and Dig, they also found out that inside of the rat's den is actually their secret hideout. So that means they get to do all the stuff that they want, you know, since they've been to this camp. Yeah, they had a lot of, a lot of good stuff. They had a lot of good food inside. And, they, like, they had some comic books, all this other stuff that they collect inside there. And they even had a soda machine, which actually shoots and, and knocks Fred, you know, yeah, actually knocks Fred out of the park. Yeah, winds up unconscious after that. They were also talking about stories about the that they actually put in, you know, those purple pills, you know, the drugs, which turned out to be super vitamins inside the gruel. So that's the main reason why the gruel themselves were, were really bad. So Fred has also found out that prior to their upcoming summer camp games, he's now being, and he he wouldn't believe this, he's being teamed up once again by his arch rival. Kevin, once again played by Jake Brewery. So now, yeah, so that means now that he's competing against them, that now he thought that maybe this this will be a good time to sign up for in order to compete against them. So that means now we have the head counselor, you know, to, uh, to team up. And that's where they started to come up with their own uh, talent contests, you know, where they get to sing and and dance and all this other stuff in order to win the trophy. Well, well, apparently Fred decided to come up with his own song that would please the whole audience. This is like an American Idol for for all summer camps out there, and it's done in a very poor job uh, that you just want to believe. He came up with a song called the Loser Song. Yeah, <laughs> the Loser Song. Ugh. Yeah, they, they did came up with some really crappy shit in the movie. And then after that, and once they finally won, yeah, <laughs> they finally got the trophy. All And they stayed in there all the way until their last day of camp. When Fred's mother finally arrived you know, with his boyfriend, that's a pizza guy. Yeah, so now, you know, they get to have all the pizzas they want. Yeah, and then they're talking about his experience over there. Well, he mentioned all this other horrible stuff until, at the same time, he had fun. So, the movie was over. Well, I sure didn't have a good time, and, and I certainly didn't have a lot of fun watching this piece of shit. Because, you know, summer camp movies has always been this fun and exciting. Because you really enjoy the look and, and the feel of what it was like being in summer camp. You just want to have fun. You know, always enjoy, you know... A lot of campers out there and and do all the activity that you want to do it's like it's like your lifelong dream has come and gone um, and I still think heavyweights has been one of my favorite movies of all time as a kid and I still love it from this day on and it'll always be remembered from this day forward and 
trust me on this one, this movie is a whole lot funnier than anything that Fred has been doing in the, the entire fucking 82 minutes of this torture mess that I had to deal with. It, it wasn't even funny, not even once. I, once again with the first two films, there was no humor into them. It's just basically your typical summer camp movie that just turns out to be a complete disaster within minutes. And it's also cliche too. Because I pretty much have seen this many times already in, in all, all these traditional camp movies out there. You know, and I always love all the other films that, f that came up with the idea, like Meatballs and you know, Salute Your Shorts, which is of course a TV show, and many others. This is just like a, a, another crappy movie that Fred just wanted to come up with that's not even fun. The kids in the movie was just your typical kids that you that's been borrowed with from so many summer camp movies. And it's not even memorable. I don't even care about them, to say the least. And also at the end of the movie when we found out that the fat guy, you know, does sing and talk, but uh, I know it, it's just it's so predictable. Boy, Tom Arnold, I haven't seen him this embarrassed since his film the stupids and this is right up there with that film and all the other bad films that followed that um, he just comes around just doing what he does best he just you know he came up with that stupid model you know called the the campers to to come in there you know rise shine all so on and so forth and it's too much <laughs> I mean, he deserved better than this. I gotta admit, though, I do dig on, on the sexy nurse that they had in the movie. That's fine by me. But, in fact, I think I'd like to see more of her than the rest of this godforsaken film. Um, and it's nothing special. I mean, the, the singing contest was, was lame. All these activities they came up with is, is just cruel and dumb, disgusting. And they, all, and they threw in all these other bathroom humor jokes. And especially there was one kid that was inside the, the potty room. It's just painful. And, oh, very unpleasant to sit through. Um, and it's just sad that, you know, I wasted 82 minutes already having to watch this. Well, I'm just glad that it's finally over. <laughs> That's for sure. Because hopefully this is the last movie that I'm going to review and and quite frankly I hope this is the last movie <laughs> because I hope Fred doesn't come up with his own I just hope Lucas Crankshank doesn't come up with his Fred character once again and yet another crappy movie because I think free is is enough to, to make me suffer already yeah <sighs> very unpleasant to watch now yeah, even his TV show sucks Everything he does sucks, and I'm just glad I could finally move on to my whole entire life, so I can do whatever I want to do, you know, have fun, and you know, go out and do whatever I want during the summer, and avoid this piece of shit movie that I had to sit for. Um, so, for all sake of humanity. Avoid all three of these crappy movies. Yeah, including the TV show and all that. But for fans out there that does love Fred Finkelhorn, well, enjoy it while you can because I just can't stand it anymore. So anyway, I give this piece of shit, Fred Free, Camp Fred, the legendary and never forgotten, zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Much later. Bye.